afternoon. My name is uh, Mark. I am from Care Sharing. I'm a, I'm a programmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a programmer. So, we also use Git, so we like sharing. So, so um, um, I think uh, the three games, uh, like, I'm probably the, uh, the gamer from all the speakers, because I like the top three games coming up this year. Which is uh, Diablo, Dota 2, and Guild Wars 2. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna talk about code review with Gears. So it's not very different from Git. So everything I'm gonna talk about also gonna going to touch base a lot on Git. So who are you? Uh, who in here are doing code review already in the company? How do you do uh, code review? You're making fun of the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Reviewing of the code, and then you could also do design review at the same time. So there's a lot of interaction. 
I think what most in our business, one guy buys, and the other guy just looks at it. And then just maybe, you know, if, we, if they do a lot of discussion, it will also take, you know, make the coding. But, you know, some people are making it, uh, making the fact that you're using fair programming. So maybe the other one is also the same, over the shoulder view. So you're programming there, and your boss is at the back. <laughs> and then you're making comments like, you know, why is it, uh, you know, why is the variable in the graph? You know, why is the state there? Why is it matter very well? Who would want to work in that environment? So, so the then we have the tool assisted review. So I think this is what uh, most of the what people are doing for this now. So hopefully that your work, workspace doesn't look like this. So why? So you're not doing code reviews yet. So why, why would you use it? Um, um, before that, the story before, 10 years ago, is that a lot of people are saying that you have to use GCS, universal control system. If you don't use it, if you're still using US computerized or maybe computerized, you're actually, uh, you're actually making it very hard, you know, making life hard. So why do you have to use uh, code review? So one thing is that it improves code quality, and then it helps in training. So, Originally, a code review started with, if you imagine, for example, uh, with a Linux kernel. So I think until now, Linus is the only person who has access to the Git repo. So he's the only one who has made changes to the Git, to the repo on the Linux kernel. So he does a lot of reviews, but I don't think, I don't think he does reviews himself. Maybe some of his other guys does the reviews. But he's the only one who has uh, access to the uh, repo. He's the only one who observes. The idea there is that I just cannot afford anybody commission code to be screen grabbed. So that's actually one of the reasons why we're doing code reviews is that it sort of just improve the quality of code. So before the, uh, the code is, is merged in the main branch, for example, in the second branch, somebody has to, you know, someone else should be able to look at the code and give the feedback. And one thing that uh, originally was for improvement of code quality, but one thing that we learned is that over time, it also helps in training. So just the discussion of your source code with somebody who's more senior, you know, just in a sort of like a mentorship uh, setup, it helps a lot of junior programmers get feedback in terms of if your code is good, if your design is already good. And it adds a bit of a lot of that benefit. So for us, it's that I actually turn it around that code review is, uh, helps a lot more in training part than improving the code quality. So the idea there is that um, um, by improving the training part, by improving you know all the programmers you have, the junior programmers, actually also improve your code quality. So in turn, it's much better to look at it. The code review is a way to train programmers into your company, and then hopefully they will really also improve your code. So why Garrett? Um, code review, I think, uh, like I said in the before, there's great abilities for uh, SDN, so we're using Garrett because uh, we're using ma uh, mainly Git. So we used to use SBN before, but as soon as Git was out, we right away ch changed to Git. So I think uh, uh, Daria already mentioned the benefits of Git. So uh, follows the submit patches workflow. Uh, one thing that we like about Garrett is that uh, it's a web-based system where you, if you want to submit patch, you don't have to do a lot of you know calling the person. You could just submit the patch right away by right, right, Git push and then your, your changes is already on the system, so you don't have to wait for the person to accept it. You don't even need to know the, the, the IP address, something like that. So, web-based, and it's a very nifty tool. Later on, I will show it to you. Uh, you could do side-by-side -side comparison, and you could, do, you could also <coughs> add your comments in the Git system itself. So it's like GitHub. If you look at GitHub, there's pull requests and everything, so it's very similar to how a is. Then you can also submit multiple patches for a particular, so let's say for example you submit one change and somebody there's a comment in terms of your code. You could uh, submit multiple patches together with the same change set. So you can see all the discussions, all the progression of your patches all the time. So let's say for example you, your patches has already reached 10 patches, patch set. So right away it can tell you that something really needs to be you know, reviewed in terms maybe the design, maybe the requirements, or maybe the programmers really having our time, you know, making the code better. So, behind the scenes, so, based on Java, uh, <laughs> what's wrong with Java? <laughs> 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 the Java programmers are, uh, uses its own
own built-in web server jetting, I think it could also work with all the other containers, so JBoss or you know, Tomcat. Then it has its own SSH server. So the idea there is that uh, if you use Garrett, you don't need to set up a separate Git repo. It is already the Git repo you have. And then at the same time, has also the web server, uh, the web application that does all the code review. Uh, supports all the other protocols, Git daemon, Git over HTTP, but these two I don't recommend because they're not very secure. So it's not very hard to use SSH. Everybody uses SSH already. So nobody uses FTP anymore, right? <laughs> so one thing that's also nice with Garrett is that it actually works with an upstream Git repo. So the idea is that you could use Garrett, for example, in your local company, and then if you say use a different GitHub or Gitorious or whatever, Bitbucket or whatever, uh, to deploy your app, you could configure it that all the changes that is committed or merged in your Garrett local repo could be merged in the live side. So then you don't have to expose your Garrett system outside. So we have to expose the uh, gear system for this demo. So how to start? So there, that's the site. Go uh, go to google.com. Uh, you can download it, install it, uh, like the Hudson or Jenkins. Yeah, you just need to add users, then add the public keys like you would do in GitHub. Set the global permissions, then create the project. So it's not very hard to do. And how does it fit uh, with all the workflow? Um, the way we do our application is that we have a master branch that is always pointing to the production side. So if you say, for example, your site is Facebook, for example. So we have a master branch that points to Facebook. Now this particular workflow is only is based on ours, so I would not say you need to copy that or anything. It's not the set workflow for using Mirit. So what we do is that we have the master branch, and then we have the development branch for new stuff. So it's very similar to all the other kinds of workflow. But the idea here is that since we're using Git, uh, we encourage developers to work in the local separate branch. So this was the question earlier about um, what happens if a lot of developers are making changes to the same development branch at the same time. So the idea is that uh, each of the developers should have its own working branch. I will show later on in the demo how that works. Then everybody submits patches for the development. It's like you have to submit, you submit your code changes for review to whatever branch you want to have it merge to. And the good thing with Garrett is that when you submit your code for review, it does not merge it directly to development. So that means when you submit your code for review, everybody will not get that change yet. It has to be approved. So once it's approved, then that's the time that everybody gets the uh, change. So then you have to do uh, rebasing. You have to do a lot of rebasing. I will also show uh, how rebasing works. So I think that's it. I will not uh, this, and, uh, do a lot more talk, I will just uh, show you how, how I did it for you. So this is actually how it looks like. Uh, this is our code school uh, gear system. This one of the inserts is here. So if you look at it, uh, these are all the open source code for you. So let's say, for example, let's create a new repo. So let's say, let's do a new demo. Now, right now, so far is that initially 
initializing a git repo, but that git repo is only on my computer. It's not yet on the coder tool side. So what we'd like to happen is that uh, we'd like to create a remote repo first and uh, give it. If you go here, you see these are all the projects. So this is the one I tested yesterday. So let's create a new repo there. Uh, the good thing also with Garrett is that you don't need to do, I could actually create it from here, but you could also do it from the SSH command line. I prefer the, uh, the command line, it's much faster. This one is not a git command, it's more like a gear command. So what it does is that it, it's an SSH, uh, it's a command over SSH and instructs the gear to create a new project for the new new git repo I just created. So right now if you go here, you can see, see a new repo already. But if you look at it, there's nothing there yet. So what we do is that, uh, remember I already created an initial commit here. This one. So we would like to uh, send this commit over to the new repo on the gear side. So first, uh, branch from the local repo is now pushed to the remote branch. You can see it here. Here this one. So uh, Garrett also has support for uh, this web, so you could browse the source code and that. So you can see it here, this is the initial commits and then you can also see uh, the new uh, So you could see all the things. So let's also push the uh, This is actually, uh, every time we create a new VRED project, we have to do all this uh, boilerplate code. But uh, if you already have an existing repo, you could actually uh, import it directly to VRED. Uh, that is much more of a manual process. And you would have to have the one retaining your VRED to do that, because you would have to do it on the service side. So now we have two branches already. Mm -hmm. Development and master. So that one also. So the idea now is that I have a, this is a, a real cool. 
file and also added three two different files. So the idea here is, for example, I did that. Uh, the idea here is that every time uh, you have to make new changes in your local branch, you know, we encourage that you to create your own uh, uh, public branch, like more, more of your uh, working branch. So now. But we'd like to send it to uh, to, be, to gear it for review. So here you don't see it yet. So this is also the difference with uh, the code review system. It still uses the, the Git process, but uh, it has a different uh, wrap. So instead of wrap set development or wrap set master. So you're pushing your changes, you're pushing your latest commit, which is actually referred to head, to that particular branch, so for review. So that's uh, that. Here, so the changes is not yet uh, merged to uh, development branch, so it's still up for review. So the good thing with Garrett is that uh, we can see uh, the changes from here. Here you can see uh, this one is a new file before it's not created. Now it's new. Uh, this one is a change. So you could also see the difference between the two files. And you could also see here. So let's say, for example, I would say uh, make a comment. So this one, I think, every time somebody makes a review, the developer, the one who pushes the code, will also get uh, an email notification. So let's say I'd like to uh, add those. Since this is only, uh, for example, this is only a minor change to my previous commit, I'd like to just uh, append this particular change to the previous commit already put. So it's before the, the, the before the change, if you look at from here, but only containing this. So I merge the commit, the new change is made, so now they're after the one. So now they're after the one change. So what I do is that I would like to uh, submit a new path set, a new change for this particular thread. So I'm just making a minor commit based on this thread.
another thing also I'd like to point out is that uh, you could actually add other people here who would like you to review the code. So they would all, they could also all add the comments here in line, or maybe you could also do a review. And they could also add points. Say it's already verified, or looks good, someone else is approved. But those are permissions, because it's also one thing that's good with you is that you have built in permission, unlike if you say it's just a vanilla git is that uh, so only a few people, for example, you could give permissions that could uh, submit the code or sort of merge the code to the brand. So you have verified, look at good, and then publish. I think um, there's actually a lot more uh, uh, way you could use Garrett, but uh, that should give you an idea. That the good thing with Garrett is that uh, you don't have to, um, uh, everybody could just continue to work on their own and then push their code for review, and you don't have to worry about their changes being merged right away. So the bad thing about not having a code review system is that if somebody pushed something in your Git repo, everybody would get the bad code. So then everybody gets it. You have to wait for until somebody fixes the code. Okay. And that's it. Maybe uh, you have any questions? I have a question. So, what do you have? Uh, I've worked with uh, Ruby board. So, what happens is that we push a review, but we could still um, forget to write how it is. How I understand there is you're pushing into there that what is okay is the one that stores it in the official recovery. That's yeah. Right. Um, this command, for example, uh, RIPS4, um, sort of like uh, Git, is actually, the way it's implemented is very similar to just Git. It actually does not add anything to Git. What it does is that 